We get a lot of questions about SCORM. What is a SCORM file? What is SCORM compliance? Do I need SCORM? Well, today we're going to give you an overview of SCORM and we're going to go through what it is, how you create it, and do, do you, you need, need it? it? And we're, as a bonus, going to give you a brief history of SCORM. Pretty exciting stuff. A crash course. A SCORM course. <laughs> So you can we put are you want. the e-learning partners channel where we've made this channel for you to simplify you and e-learning everything related to your e-learning program and online course that you're trying to create we just want to help you out which is why we have a free master class to simplify e-learning for you give you the a to z process you are guaranteed to create a successful e-learning program every single time you create one i can breathe now boom let's jump into the crash course here we go what is score what does it even so score it stands for share of Content, Content, object, object reference, reference model. module. What does that even mean? What does that mean? I don't know. So, <laughs> here's the reality. You'll never hear it called that, but that's what it stands for. So, here is how SCORM came to be. In the year 2000, SCORM 1.0 was created in the year 2000. Two okay? grand. And it was created as a file packaging system to take your course content, put it in a file, package it up, wrap a ball around it so that you could have it live in multiple LMSs. And it specifically was built to have a conversation with multiple LMSs. It is linguistic. <laughs> 1.1 was 1 created. Then 1.1 created, and it's like, hey, we're going to update this January shit. 2001. And then they created 1.2 six months later. And then in 2004, they're like, this isn't 1.3. This is going to be called 2004. SCORM 2004. And that <laughs> is the SCORM packaging compliance file type that we are using today. What do you mean? It, that was 20 years ago. Holy that just goodness. shows you... Wow. How old school SCORM is. SCORM is still the most common language in e-learning today. The most common compliance system in e-learning today. But it's old. If it was a human, it could vote. <laughs> Can't drink yet, but we're oh getting there. My so what is SCORM, Hector? There are three main components of what SCORM is. The first is what, Johnny? It allows you to package your content for desktop learning. So SCORM shines in a desktop learning space. That shows you where we were in 2004 and where we are today. We have another video on our channel all about SCORM versus Tin Can. Tin Can is the most recent compliance language in e-learning check that out all about mobile number two an lms is required yes scorm files can't be opened on their own they have to be imported into an lms to work so what does this mean this means that if you create a course in scorm it's worth nothing to you until it lives in an LMS. Once it lives in an LMS, you can deliver it to your learners. We have a video all about what an LMS is and what an LMS versus an authoring tool is. Check that out right above the video. Number three. It is all, and this is a big reason why you. a lot of people love SCORM is because you only have to create content once. Yes, you create the content in the SCORM file, and then what you can do is take that content, and instead of recreating it in a new LMS, you just take that content, send it to that other LMS, upload it, it makes you money, saves you time, and you're good to go. So that is why people love SCORM. So how does one create a SCORM file, Hector? It's with an authoring tool. You've exactly. heard us talk about this before. If you haven't, we have a lot of great content about this authoring tool. One is called Adobe Captivate. Adobe Captivate is one of the most popular authoring tools. The other one, which is actually probably bigger, but a little more expensive, actually a lot more expensive, is what we call Articulate 360. Now, Articulate 360 isn't just one authoring tool. It is dozens of authoring tools that all create SCORM, but they well, how it works is they create the course and then you can export it as SCORM or you can export it as Tin Can. There's a lot of other things you can do as well, but that is how you do it. So do you need SCORM, Hector? Not necessarily. Again, there are so many platforms out there that have native authoring tools where you can create content. And honestly, if you're a company that already has a learning management system that is only SCORM compliant, that's typically the yeah. only time that you're really gonna need it. Apart from that, Or not really. if you're like our great friend, 
and client Scott, who he builds out these comprehensive courses. And what he does is he'll actually sell the course itself to live on his customers LMS. Perfect use case of why you would need to have Squirm and do it, do it, do it. All right, team, we want to see you at the next video. We want you to go watch Scorm versus, versus Tin Can, aka XAPI, aka the future, aka XAPI came out in like 2012, so still not the future, but go watch it anyway. We'll see you there.